Welcome to hole number one of the Sunshine State Nine Hole Cup. Now, this old bridge park course is still tough. New hole positions or not. Setting up here into a headwind, I'm playing this with a navigator and an extra mile. You could certainly use a longer ball, which basically goes for almost any hole on this course uh, that isn't a par three. And even a par three, I play a Titan. However, I digress. This one, I'm just trying to play it over the sand here on the right hand side. A little bit of overpower just to compensate for that wind. Probably could have used a ring or two more. As you can see, lots of room to work with, but we get this one into a perfectly fine position. If you get it down quite a ways further here, you can approach the shot with a thorn um, or whatever short iron you prefer, but the long iron here plays essentially the same thing. Now, I'm just going for a simple bounce over the bunker here. I give it one left and just a tiny bit, like half a ball or so of backspin. And I let this one kind of trickle out onto the green. I mean, these holes, they feel basically the same with these hole positions. You know, a lot of uneven, curved, slanted, sloped surfaces to bounce on. And, you know, it's going to be a challenge out there for everybody. So I hope it goes well for you. Absolutely. Little bounce here. Obviously, we hit that great ball, but still comes in just about how we'd like to see it. it gives us a way to get things started. Hole number two, this is an interesting par three. I think a very consistent way to play here is with the sniper. I give it like one back, one right, and try to just trickle this one down to the hole. Depending on the wind angle here, this one could be difficult. You could also play like a max backspin shot with like a rocket or like a higher level Thor's hammer, something like that, you know, depending on the level of clubs in your bag and just kind of bounce it directly almost onto the green. I think they're very similar shots and depending on the wind that we're working with here, you know, roughly going to give you a similar idea here. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there's a perfect funnel to work with or not, but this one comes in with very nice speed, just a tiny little bit off the mark. All right, hole number three, par five. This is when this course starts to get spicy. I'm going to show you it here with a little bit of a tailwind angle, any kind of tailwind angle. And I've got a katana ball for that max side spin to the left. And you'll notice here, we're going to change the driver to the quarterback because I remembered that my extra mile level six does definitely does not have enough curl for this shot. A low level APOC here could still get the job done. Absolutely. But I know everybody's got a quarterback in their bag somewhere. Quarterback nine seems to do just fine. Setting up here, you know, if you used a Kingmaker, you'd be able to make your adjustment while still on the pad and not dropping down into the water. Um, because I do drop down into the water here, I push this one up to max, which is about a couple of rings, maybe one and a half, two rings there. I end up going with a tiny little touch of overpower, not that much. I ease off there and max left curl, particularly because we have a strong left to right wind. And you'll see this one does come close. It flirts with the left rough here. You have to play with this curl. You have to get used to the exact amount depending on the tournament wind conditions. And when you're practicing, it's different every time. So from this position, um, a Goliath, as I'm recommending here, would give you the nice rough bump. Roughly five top, like one to two bars of right spin. And with enough tinkering, uh, yes, tinker, we can get this one to the pin and you can find some consistency with it if you don't have the backbone you'll notice that i or excuse me the goliath you'll notice i've got a backbone here i end up playing this backspin shot with six bars of backspin and just that one bar of left there and i'm kind of leaving it slightly above the pin here just because of the way this green slopes so strongly from right to left and you know just trying to get it close um i don't know why i gave it a touch of curl there but it felt right into the wind, got a hit perfect, and, you know, this one comes in very, very closely, all things considered. Uh, you know, it depends on your style of play, but this is the tailwind way to play here. All right, so hole three and a headwind, and you'll see here I'm actually playing it over on the left-hand side. With a rookie bag, it is very difficult to pull off that shot. Two back, two right, and I'm setting up with the right side of the red ring. It's a lot of R's. Touching the corner there of the, you know, the water and the rough. Um, I'm going to adjust this shot 10% max, and you're going to see that we use half a ball of right curl here. There's certainly a big power hook, I think it is, to the right uh, to be had here. 
um, depending on your skill level. And, you know, you can get this one up past that bunker, which does give you a better look at the green. You know, in headwind here you'll see with the sniper at this level it's just not adequate if you had a zerk to spare something like that it might put you in a better kind of rough pump range but i end up playing a little bounce shot here just to get it up to the green you know just to kind of get that putt out and to make sure to take your eagle in the headwind in rookie um you know there's not a ton of options you could use like a big dog and try to do something with that you know, kind of rough bump closer to the green. But all in all, I'm giving it like a ball and a half of right curl, a little bit of right spin, a little bit of top spin to counter that headwind, and just try to get this one cleanly onto the green, or in this case, onto the fringe, to give yourself a clean shot for eagle. All right, hole number four. The closest I've been able to get to this pin is with the Guardian. And I set this one up with max back, two bars of right spin. And that is 7.5 bars of backspin, two bars of right spin. And I adjust this shot here at 10% max. You'll notice that I'm right between the bunker and the rough. So make sure you do a little practice or two here to make sure that you're going to have the correct elevation depending on the tournament wind. Don't forget, I make these videos every single week for every tournament for the rookie players to teach you sort of around the course. These are not exact tournament wind shots. They're designed, oh, and, you know, get your bags ready before you play a club that you uh, might not be as familiar with. But, you know, um, this one still comes in mighty fine. If you're having fun, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I'm always doing my best to get those golf class shots to us. So as you can see, this one comes straight at it, looking very, very nice. And I think this is going to give us a lot to work with. Hole number five. This one, it's a bit of an evil hole. This par five, it's got exacting sort of requirements to get down there and even get the eagle. I set up on the right-hand side as often as possible. Four and a half top, two bars of left spin with my extra mile and a tightened ball. We do need the reach on the second shot, and you'll see exactly why. But I'm going to play here, like I said, 10%. And look, you know, that yellow ring, it's, uh, it's touching the rough on both sides. If you were to hit great here on this shot, you're going to put yourself in big trouble. So keep that in mind. This is not super friendly. Yes, you can play on the left-hand side. But I hate trying to tweak the distance of the drive so that you can get between the trees. I'm using all the left curl here because of the way the rough works at the last section here. So that's the fairway, the last section of rough. You need a left curl to get it out. Um, it can get stuck in the rough if it's on the right. So second shot, I'm playing here with the sniper. We'd like to do the rough bump. And you could, especially if you've got a bit longer reach. Um, but instead, I'm going to opt for this bounce over shot, which I think is absolutely probably the most consistent way to go. One back, one left, and spoiler, I do hit great here. It could have actually played at 0%, so keep that in mind. You know, we always have to tweak and adjust according to the situation. But generally speaking, if you can get this drive down on the right-hand side, it's going to give you a much nicer shot directly at the green to give you a chance to get the albatross. It is... A droppable shot here but it takes quite a bit of work to get it dialed in and as you can see you tap it in for eagle you move on with a clean two on your card don't let old bridge park eat you up all right this whole six is so long it's actually much easier from the front tee so consider ourselves lucky here i set up with the katana ball and the quarterback you'll see i'm going to now swap to tighten but i'm not going to push up to give me a little bit of room to adjust i give this one three bars of backspin two bars of backspin two bars of right spin and i almost give it too much right curl so 10 percent max adjustment and you'll notice i give it a lot um i probably should have just used like maybe half to three quarters of a ball of right curl um, but it is good to be on the right side of this fairway. It gets us closer to the hole. Just maybe don't flirt with the right side quite that much, okay? But hey, I'm not trying to tell you everything to do here. Second shot, you'll notice we're going to play a second bounce rough bump. So I get down on the fairway there. And four and a half top, two bars of right spin. And just let that ball guide right there between those left bunkers. Trickle down. Come back a little bit. Come back. Come back. There we go. See how this comes alive now? It gives you something you can work with. Of course, a bad grate will put you in trouble, but I was quite pleased that a moderate grate here played still safely. This is the kind of hole that can just eat you alive with one bad shot, so try to play it safe. 
you know, and just get this one down there and take your birdie because a par is not what I wish upon any of you beautiful people. Even the great ball here, you'll see, does come in very, very nicely. And that is a benefit of using a high accuracy club. Just sneaking through the bunkers, rolling down very nicely. I think this new position is actually a little bit better opportunity than it used to be, uh, you know, near the back of the green. So I like this change. And even if I miss here, the putt is no big deal. Okay, hole number seven. I'm going to show you two ways. This one with a bit of a headwind. I decided to just go for a katana ball. So I had a bunch of right spin to work with. But ultimately, what I found here is that using about four bars of backspin and one bar of right spin. So you could certainly play this with a navigator if you've got the reach here. And there's nowhere flat to land. This little spot just to the left of the main fairway does seem to give us like a little bit of consistency, but look at the big slope that we're on. Depending on the wind direction, you might be pulling uphill or downhill. You know, it's, it's really inconsistent. This is the kind of hole that once you get that tournament wind, you just have to keep working it and working it, get more familiar with the setup. And generally speaking, though, this will get you there safely. A uh, little bounce, a little roll, comes in just a little bit off. But, you know, I think this is going to be a good path to play if you're looking for the conservative route. All right, so hole seven again quickly. I found that if I switched to the power three Titan, I was able to reach this rough here and be perfectly at maximum distance with the sniper level nine. I give it one top and one or so right. I wish I'd played 1.5 top and about 1.5 to two bars of right spin. Getting that second bounce to be a little bit past the fringe onto the green. And I think you're gonna have something really, really nice to work with here. The direct tailwind meant that my adjustment wasn't too wonky. You know, it, it does come downhill a little bit, um, but overall, I think it's gonna be a good angle if we can get it. You hit that rough, you roll in nicely here. It comes up a bit short, but I think that's gonna be a popular play if the wind is right. Hole number eight, you want to treat the drive quite cautiously. Four and a half top, two bars of left spin, and instead of playing it up at max, I play it back before this first, you know, rough peninsula, if you will. Got the ball guide heading directly down the middle of the fairway, if not favoring the left side ever so slightly. You'll be tempted to use curl. Don't do that. Just play a clean drive here. You don't want to catch one of these bunkers because you've got a long distance to go. You're going to have a tough time trying to even save a birdie. Never mind get the eagle, which is pretty much dead. The thing about this course is you have really long par fours. The par fives aren't much better, and the par threes are really inconsistent. So once again, a very difficult tournament. The scores are going to be high. Just don't be too hard on yourself. Second shot, seven to eight bars of topspin. In this tailwind, of course, seven will be sufficient. And about two bars of left spin. And I should have left this ball guide a little bit short just like that. But you'll see I get a little bit more aggressive. And I'm like, let's just shove that ball guide up in the hole. I know better in tailwind. I should have left it a bit short. But anywhere between zero to 10%. Uh, max distance here on this adjustment for the rough bump and you know I think this is going to be the way that most players will play certainly you can land on the fairway there and develop a little bounce shot to get it there but you know with a long par four you're looking for as much consistency as possible I think this is going to give us his best chance as you know as reasonably reasonably possible Hole nine, first and foremost, is absolutely about this drive. I'm playing two and a half top, two bars of left spin here, and about half that red ring uh, touching the left rough. Um, I have a little bit more than half, but generally that's approximately you know where you want to play. We're closer to mid-distance, but I make the pull at 10 max. So keep that in mind, depending on the wind you're working with. This is a slight headwind, mostly crosswind here. I don't use any curl, any funny business. You're looking for that second bounce rough bump onto the island. Big bounce there. Clip the rough, rolls out nicely, gets a bit of extra distance here. And the second shot really is about distance. You have to use your big dog or a cataclysm, whatever you've got. And you'll notice that I'm going to play here with a little bit of top spin, about one bar. Two bars of right spin. Two bars. I should have used about one and a half. Yeah, I go with one, maybe one and a half or a half a bar. It's it's very finicky, but you'll see I play at a 10% max, and I'm going to use max right curl. You don't want to come up short on this drive. I'd rather go, or this uh, approach, I'd rather go slightly long just because, oh, and max overpower, you know, just to keep things spicy. No, I'm kidding. Just like a couple clicks of overpower. Um, you don't want to go way flying over the green. Great ball should be just fine here. 
Um, it's really just a matter of staying safe. Guys, I appreciate you watching the video. The thumbs up, the comments, and all the new subscribers on the channel. Don't forget to check ehrlichgaming.com for notes based on this video. And I hope to catch you in the live stream. Good luck, and thank you very much for watching.